Hey guys, welcome back to Stenson Farms. Hey, I've got another video today on my 520. I mentioned in the last video uh, of the walk around of the John Deere 520 that I had some work I needed to do on it. So I'm gonna try to get that done this afternoon. What I'm working on is the PTO. I didn't mention it in the uh, previous video, but <clears throat> I need to do some work on the PTO. It, it started slipping on me last year while I was picking corn. So I'm gonna try to adjust that out. So I'm going to show you uh, what all is involved with how the PTO works on this tractor and then I'll show you how to adjust it. All right, if you can see this lever right here, it's down here on the platform right behind the gear shift. This is what throws the PTO in and out of gear or puts the gears in where the PTO will run. You can only engage and disengage uh, this lever if the engine is off. So I usually leave it engaged uh, and just leave, leave it in all the time and I don't turn it on and off. But <clears throat> this, if you can see, let me get a better angle. Here, maybe we can see better from this side. <clears throat> this, this foot lever here uh, is what you actually move to engage your PTO. So you've got this foot lever here, you've got another foot lever here that is mounted on the same bracket. It in turn is connected to this linkage right here that runs along the back and hooks to this rod right here which engages the shaft going into your rear, rear housing. <coughs> So, you can basically, on the fly, with your foot, just push that forward. That engages the PTO. When you push it back, it disengages it. And that's how the PTO operates as far as from a functioning standpoint. So, what we're going to do is, uh, we got to get inside this rear housing to adjust the disc packs uh, in the clutches on the PTO. So the first thing we want to do is this pin right here that holds, that goes through and holds this in of the three point arm on. We'll pull this pin out and drop that loose. We'll leave it connected as it goes up to the upper arm. Uh, we'll just swing it over out of the way and that'll be fine. But then this whole bracket that it hooks to that that pin goes through is held on by two bolts here and another bolt around there if you can see it that goes through the bottom frame so what we have to remove that and the reason we got to remove it is we're trying to get this light is making a mess we're trying to get to this inspection plate right there if you can see it on the side of the rear housing with those three 9 16 uh, size bolts in it and when we pull that off we'll have a clear shot and the clutch pack for the PTO will be uh, exposed all right so I got all the bolts out of it I've got the arm unhooked I'll just slide this off set it on the floor and, and set it right there Okay, I, I told you wrong. Those are 11 sixteenths, not 9 sixteenths inch nuts. We'll get these three removed and we will pop this little cover off. Okay, so I was wrong twice. The bottom two nuts are 11 sixteenths. The top one is a 5 eighths. Okay, so here's the deal where we're at now. I got the bolts out and I'd already pulled this cover off. So when I did, oil came out of it. So I'm having to drain a little oil out. Uh, I was into this last summer. I had to do this once already. As you can see here on the back, this is the fill. This right here, this, this bolt, this is the fill point. And 
if you can see, it is below the level of the bottom of this hole where the plate come off. So there's either one of two things. Uh, I either overfilled it a little bit because I did change the oil in this, put fresh oil in it. Okay, so now that's a possibility. The other possibility is back here with your input shaft that comes through your rear end into the back housing, which drives the PTO, uh, it could be leaking. It could, the seal could be leaking. And in that case, it's going to let some of the rear end oil come back into the housing back here. And in turn, uh, we'll overfill it. It looks like it's been mixed with a little something. So I'm thinking I have may have a leak on my seal coming from the rear end. If that's the case, then that's a big job. Everything up through here, if you can see all these bolts where they bolt onto the rear end, all the way up to the top where the seat's at, all that, the whole rear end back part of it has to come off in order to get in there and uh, to the seals on that shaft. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just try, I'm going to let the oil drain down to the correct level and I'm going to go ahead and try to adjust this clutch pack. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Alright, this is going to be really hard to see, but what you're looking at in there, and I'll try to get a screwdriver there in a minute uh, and point it out, but is the clutch pack. Uh, this PTO works by this lever arm right here. When it is rotated from the uh, the pedal on the operator's station, it engages this clutch pack. It works like a cam. Uh, the back part of it is the cam. It's got springs in it. And when it's compressed together, it'll cam over and hold it in place. Holding the... Uh, clutch disc tight so if you can see this and i don't know if you can but there's a ring right here that i'm touching and that ring is slotted it is also threaded female threaded onto a male shaft and there is a set screw There's a set screw that sits right here. If I can get my screwdriver on it. It is right there. And what you have to do is screw that screw in. It is screwed out between in one of the slotted areas. You gotta screw that in, and that's what holds it in place. So you screw it in, and then you can turn this uh collar and you want to turn it up so if you're standing behind the tractor and looking at it it'd be counterclockwise by turning it up it's threading it closer to the clutch pack therefore uh tightening up the clutch okay you'll be able to see the screw it's right there and i've got it screwed all the way in if you can see that notch that the screw sits in, then uh, that's what holds it in place. So the screw's in out of the way. So we want to turn the collar up. Right there's the next notch. So I've turned it one notch. I can't remember how many notches there are in it. But they recommend if you only turn it two or three at a time. All right, there's two notches. If you can see right there, that's the second notch. That's three. Now we want to get it lined back up with the screw. And then you turn your screw counterclockwise and it'll back out into that notch and hold that ring in place. All right, I don't know if you can see or not, but 
I've got to screw back in the slot. I backed it back out until it's all the way out as far as it'll go in between the slot holding the collar in place. I tried to film that, but I couldn't. I couldn't hold the camera and the light and the screwdriver and see what I was doing. So, but that's how you set the screw back once you get once you get the collar adjusted where you want it. So, I've about got it adjusted as far as it'll go. So I'm probably gonna wind up changing the clutch pack at some time and maybe before the PTO works. But I'm going, I'm going to put everything back together. Uh, we'll see how it engages first. So I'm probably going to wind up having to change this clutch pack in here. And to do that, I'd have to pull this housing off the back along with the PTO shaft. It'd come off with it. It's a gear on the end of it that hits a gear on the end of the clutch pack right inside here. And we take that off and change that out. But if I wind up doing that, I'm probably going to wait until I pull the whole section off the back and check that seal coming out of the rear end. So from the operator's seat, this is the lever or the pedal that engages and disengages your PTO shaft. So we'll see. Feels pretty good. It's got some resistance against it, like it's cammed in place. And there, it's out of gear now. So I know I'm going to eventually end up changing the clutch pack in it. I'm going to try to get by with it a little while. Uh, like this before I have to tear into it and do that All right, so I've got the little plate back on I'm gonna go ahead and go I'm gonna go ahead and put this bracket on and bolt it up and then we'll put the lift arm back in So I'll be right back All right, I've got that bracket back in place It was kind of heavy. I couldn't hold the camera and put it up I'm going to try to put the lift arm back in place now. So it sits right there like that. There's a pin that comes from the inside uh, that holds it in place. I'm going to have to, I'm going to lay the camera down and do that. Okay, I've got the pin in. Everything's back together. That would have been a lot easier job uh, without trying to film it, without trying to get the camera up in that little hole. But uh, it really don't take very long to do it, but it took a little longer today, but I was trying to make it where y'all could see it. So, hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, so that's how you adjust the PTO clutch on a 520 John Deere. I think it works on other models as well the same way, uh, the 70, uh, 50, 60, 70 series, uh, all the 520s, 620s, 530s, 630s, all like that. I think they're all set up pretty much, pretty much the same. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment or any comments, feel free to comment. But uh, thanks for the support. Any way you can support us, we'll appreciate it. Uh, if you would, hit the like button. And also uh, subscribe if you would. We'd really appreciate it. But uh, until next time, we'll see you later.